Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on building out the LilyGo T-Deck. So by the end of this video, I'll show you guys how to take a stock T-Deck. We'll add a battery, a GPS radio, an external LoRa antenna. We'll slam the whole thing into a 3D printed case. And then we'll install Mesh-tastic on it so that we can send messages to our existing Mesh network which is all run on top of Mesh-tastic. So the reason this is an off-grid communications network is because it doesn't rely on cellular or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anything like that. There's a 915 megahertz lower radio inside of all three of these devices that they utilize to communicate directly with each other at 915 megahertz. The neat thing about 915 is that it's in the ISM band here in America, which means you are legally allowed to operate in it without a license. Additionally, because it's the ISM band, you can send encrypted communications, which Mesh-tastic supports out of the box with a little bit of configuration and my favorite part of the 915 megahertz is that you can get up to a few miles of range between the nodes in this mesh network which means with a handful of very cheap hardware you can very quickly deploy your own off-grid encrypted communications network that has a massive coverage area very quickly and all of these are battery powered so let's jump into the hardware all right the bill of materials is going to start with the LilyGo T-Deck and for this to work with Mesh-tastic I'm going to be using the optional low row radio at 915 megahertz and that's for transmitting within the US. The next thing we need is a battery. I have chosen the 95565 model. This is a 5000 milliamp hour battery and it will power the T-Deck for quite a few hours. After the battery, we're going to add our GPS radio. So we can see here, this is the ATGM336H, and this is the same radio that I used in the J. Hewitt War Driver builds, and it comes with this nice little block antenna. We're also going to need a 915 megahertz tuned pigtail antenna, and this one is an SMA with the SMA to IPEX adapter. So this is what we'll use to plug into the T-Deck board. Now it's very important that we get an antenna tuned to 915 megahertz if you just use an antenna off of a Wi-Fi card or Bluetooth card or out of your FPV quadcopter pile of parts, you're actually going to hurt the T-Deck and make it perform worse. So how do we know that the antenna is tuned to 915 megahertz? Well, we can use a vector network analyzer and configure it and plug the antenna in, then measure the signal to wave ratio at the frequency that we want to transmit at, or we can just buy an antenna that says that it is tuned to 915 megahertz. So I got the pack of four of these off of Amazon for 20 bucks. So these are about five bucks a piece. And the last thing we're gonna need is a case to put it all in. So the files for this are up on Thingiverse. I printed this one out of PETG CF with silk silver. All right, so in order to prepare the T-Deck for the GPS unit, we're gonna take off this plug here. This is to plug in an external GPS unit, but we're just gonna solder ours straight to the board. So I'm just gonna use a pair of snips and we're gonna snip off all the pins and these two up front that are holding this plug on. All right, now that we've got our plug off, we're gonna come in with the soldering iron and clean this up. You can use a solder wick or solder sucker or a pair of tweezers, but we're just gonna basically pull the little metal pieces that got left behind, and then we'll tin up all four of these pads so they're ready to solder too. All right, so now that we have the solder pads for our GPS radio all cleaned up and tinned, I've got four different colors of wire here, and these are 26 gauge stranded copper wire. So I'm gonna cut about an inch of each of these and strip both of the ends to get them ready for soldering. But I've got four wires that are trimmed back of different colors, and what I'm gonna do next is I want the GPS radio to sit like this with the antenna socket out. So I'm gonna drive those four wires in from the bottom and solder them here. Uh, so I'm gonna do red to VCC, black to ground. I'll do white and green to TX and RX, and we're not gonna use PPS. But I'll go ahead and stick those wires through and get them soldered up. All right, now that we've got our GPS radio all prepared, what I'm gonna do is hold it up against the T-deck here, and I'm going to place these wires where they need to be, and I'm going to cut them to length to the end of the solder pad. So VCC is going to go to VCC and ground to ground. What we're going to have to be careful with is that TX on the radio goes to RX on the board, and TX on the board goes to RX on the radio. So you have to switch TX and RX between the board and the radio. Otherwise, you'll never get a GPS lock. So if you never get a GPS lock, come back and verify that those are wired up properly. But I'm going to cut them to length, uh, tin them, solder them on, with the goal of being able to fold these wires back and have that radio live right there with the uh, external IPEX connector exposed. All 
All right, so now at this point, we've got our GPS radio all soldered in and we can just fold it back over like that. And those wires are nice and malleable. They're soldered in there well. So now we've got our GPS antenna socket on the inside and this thing is nice and snug up against the board. Let's go get started on the battery. All right, so the battery comes with this plug, but the T-Deck comes with this plug. You can see these are not the same, so we're gonna have to swap the plug onto that battery. We're gonna do that by placing it in the case with the wires coming out the bottom right here. And then we'll line up the T-Deck just to take a look. You can see where the battery is gonna plug in. So we're gonna have to bring these wires right into here. I'm gonna try and leave a little slack, but ultimately I'm gonna cut them about right here and solder on uh, the smaller attachment that'll plug into there so that we have a nice little battery run. So I'm going to begin by putting heat shrink on these so I don't forget to heat shrink uh, when I make my solder joint. And remember kids, this is a live battery. There's electricity in here. Be careful with this. All right, so now we're going to plug the battery into the T-Deck. We'll flip the power switch to on. And it takes about 15 seconds to boot, so you do have to be patient, but we see the screen works, the trackball works, the touch screen works, Hello, the audio really works, know. and we have a red light on our GPS radio telling us we've got power to GPS. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. We're gonna disconnect the battery and the speaker. And now we need to remount the speaker. So if we look at where the T-Deck is going to mount inside the case, we can see this grill here. So we need to move the speaker over to here so it's out of the way of the center so we can put the battery there. And it's just held on by some sticky tape. You can see it's loose. So I'm gonna be very careful and I'm gonna lift it off of the surface there. All right, now I'm gonna to attempt to pull this tape off with a pair of tweezers or something like that. And then what we're ultimately gonna do is try to mount the speaker over here, facing outward again, so the audio comes out through that grill there. Now I'm gonna use some Scotch double-sided extreme mounting tape to uh, make a new mount for this. So again, that it's gonna mount right here with the wire coming out the bottom. So I'm gonna make a mount piece of tape that goes right here. All right, now I've got a nice piece of mounting tape on the bottom of the speaker, so I'm gonna peel it back. I'm gonna line this up one more time and take a look at where it's gonna land. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on there with the wires pointing down. Now I'll test fit it, make sure it fits in there. All right, we've got a nice lined up fit there. We'll plug the speaker back in. All right, now we're gonna take the GPS antenna and we're gonna feed it through the slot on the top. And this just pressure mounts into that slot there. And should mount nice and flush to the top with the uh, antenna sticking out the bottom here. Next, we'll install our SMA adapter for our LoRa antenna. So I'm going to start by taking all of the things off. And I'm going to test fit it into the top, make sure it fits in there real nice and snug. Then I'll put the lock washer back on. And I'll feed it through from the inside. We'll put this mounting ring back on and we'll screw the nut onto the top. All right, we'll pull the two antenna wires out of the way and drop the battery in. And now I'll start by plugging in the GPS antenna to the GPS radio. All right, snapped in there good and it rotates nice. Now we'll hold the board out and we'll move on to the lower radio that plugs into here. And finally, we'll get the battery plugged in. And now we'll drop the whole thing into the case. We'll start by tucking the right side in to the little tension beam there. And then we'll bring over the left side. And I like to use a screwdriver just to pop it into place. Be very careful. We'll screw on the LoRa antenna. And now we'll turn it on. Take off the screen protector too. And now we've got our working T-Deck fully assembled. So now we're gonna get ready to plug it in USB-C to the computer to get Mesh-tastic flashed onto it. Okay, so flashing the Mesh-tastic firmware is super easy. We just go to flasher.meshtastic.org in a Chrome browser. We're gonna select our target device, that is the T-Deck. We're gonna select which firmware version. I'm gonna select the latest alpha. If you're not sure what to do, select the latest stable, uh, but I like living life on the edge. I'm gonna click flash, do a full erase and install. Click this button here. Now we have to put the device in DFU mode. So to do that, we're gonna hold down the trackball and turn the device on and we'll see it pops up immediately. 
we'll pick that device and hit connect. And now that we're at 100% complete, we can go ahead and turn the power switch off and unplug the device. Okay, so at this point, we've got our Meshtastic all installed and booted up. And the first thing that we'll notice is that there is no GPS. And if we look on the second screen, it says GPS not present. If we try to send a message, it's going to fail. And the reason is because now we have to do our initial configuration. So Meshtastic supports a bunch of different radios that operate at a bunch of different frequencies because a bunch of different countries allow you to transmit in different areas. So without telling Meshtastic what country you're in, it doesn't know how to properly initialize the radios because it doesn't know what frequencies you operate at. So the way we do that initial configuration is with another device. I'm using an iPad, you can use a phone, you can use anything with Bluetooth. This is connecting over Bluetooth. So as soon as you turn this on, it starts speaking and it'll pop up in the Meshtastic app. So you have to download the Meshtastic app and on the Bluetooth page, it'll show you that it's an available radio. So we'll go ahead and connect to it. And now it's gonna give us our code to bind. And we'll go ahead and do the Bluetooth pairing. And now we need to set our lower region. So here, I'm gonna select the United States and I'll hit save. Now, as soon as we do that, it's gonna reboot. All right, now that we've set our location, the lower radio should be initialized. Now we just need to enable the internal GPS. So we'll do that back on the app. We'll go to settings, we'll go to position, and over here, we'll do device GPS enabled. And we'll save that, save config. Okay, so after giving it a minute to catch up, you should see we're now talking to eight birds. So all of the GPS is now functioning. All right, so at this point, we should have a fully functioning LilyGo T-Deck that's slammed into a 3D printed case with an external LoRa antenna and a GPS radio. So it is location aware, it knows where it's at on the globe. It can send messages to our mesh network. You can see all our devices receive that. We can also receive messages. So at this point, we are fully up and running. As always, stay tuned and thanks for watching.